so most of the questions are relates to uh, there are a couple of questions related to indicator uh, microbial uh, communities or species uh, or similarities between what you see in the water treatment industry and some of the animal wastes. Yeah, so so I, I answered some of these the the questions in the Q and A, but you know I would say that E. coli is a general indicator for contamination, and it can be found in you know the the guts of many different animal species, and so I think that's the power of the microbial source tracking techniques that actually provide some host specific fecal contamination data so that you can really start to identify, you know, what is the source of the contamination, which can be used for, for decision making. Um, but in terms of research that looks at health impacts um, to the indicator that you um, detect in the environment, it's typically like E. coli and enterococci have been used for the epidemiological studies. And so there's still more work to be done on exploring alternative indicators and relating that to, you know, health and environmental outcomes. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Uh, there, we have a question uh, for you, Mark, regarding the, the leachate and its, its potential specifically for seal or for any other uh, mortality composting, and what is the potential for that leachate for uh, as a vector for disease transmission? All right, that's a that's a great question. One of the things that we did when we established our protocols through the USDA APHIS for livestock management is we we developed a generous carbon base of at least eighteen to twenty four inches, and in the case of the seals, that base absorbed all of the liquid that came out of the animals. I do not have any piles generate any leachate whatsoever. So a good thick base is really kind of the key. The other thing that was important about those sites was I didn't want to have anybody tampering with the piles. So all those sites had access control as well. So I think that's really kind of a key thing, but a good strong base, a good thick base prevents leachate and that, that takes care of that problem. Thank you. Maybe following on that uh, line of thought uh, a little bit, uh, you indicated also because of your expertise, you have responded to more events related to different animal species, poultry, and so on. So it might be very interesting to, to learn from you some of the observations, especially when it comes to responding to an event related to a hurricane, say, similar to the work Colleen has uh, discussed on, especially in flood-prone areas. Certainly, I'm here in North Carolina, or where Colleen is at. That's something of a concern. So, how does that change compared to the typical uh, mortality response? I can tell you that uh, coming down to to Florence was really a surprise. The houses, uh, when I arrived, the houses were still fairly wet, so we had to dry them out. I, the floodwaters receded, but they receded slowly, and these animals needed to be moved out of the houses and dealt with. So, one of the things that we did is we spent a lot of time using carbon to dry out the, the birds so that they could be composted. So we, we spent a lot of money and a lot of time on that when I would have probably waited another week. Those, those birds, when we, when we actually got to them, we thought they needed to be handled right away, but they actually were not in any danger of decomposing too quickly. And so I would have waited for the water to recede and we would have wasted a lot less carbon so that's one of the big things is floods bring water and water prevents oxygen penetration in compost piles. So you can't compost unless you get the water out. And so in this case, the waiting game might have been more beneficial. That's, that's probably my biggest observation. The other thing is that when I became a subject matter expert for, for the USDA, coming to some of these poultry events, I had always you know, dealt with three, 400 animals, no big deal. I went to one site in Iowa, it's uh, the Center Fresh Farm. There was over 6 million mortalities. It was just, it was, in, it was amazing. Your, your mind just races to, to figure the scale at which you can respond. And I'm likened to the phrase, eating an elephant one bite at a time. I built one window at a time. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. Thank you, Mark. Uh, I have also a question for you, Colleen, regarding some of the preparedness work, and you talked a little bit about um, 
a um, essentially some lessons learned and some responses that has improved over time. Um, if there are one or two examples that you've seen that become part of the operations specifically after these lessons learned of, of hurricane preparedness um, that became part of their management. Communication um, and just a written plan is probably the biggest thing. A little bit more of a of a hands on would be that no one, um, you know, uh, forgets to check the generator once a month. That you know that was something that really people had gotten really, um, you know, not not as good about. Um, obviously, the the COVID. There's not as much preparation. It's just thinking through what we you know what we could do different next time. And honestly, that would have probably just been to make tiny adjustments a whole lot sooner instead of big adjustments, you know, that, that knee jerk reaction at the end. So smaller adjustments sooner. Um, and then, you know, with the, with the hurricane, like I said, we, we, we learned so much from 2004 and five to 2017 that I, I hate to say it right now because we're coming into hurricane season and you never should say that, but we got so much better that, you know, it's, it's really, a um, you know, something that a lot of success was felt, even though it was a, you know, a, a not a fun time. Um, the big difference, one of the farms that I work really closely with um, in 2004, they were without power for 21 days out of one month. And in 2017, that same farm had power restored in about um, seven days. So our our utility infrastructure improved tremendously. A lot more um, concrete power poles have gone up in between, you know, now and then. So all of that helps, um, you know, a lot. It's something that we don't like learning, but we have learned from it and everybody's gotten a little better. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen.